Good morning, folks. Solar storm alert. While the earth-facing quiet has stifled big flares from the sunspots, two other eruptions have been produced and are heading this way. The first one we saw in yesterday's news directly center disk, but it was immediately followed by the eruption of the plasma filament to its southeast. Watching again, the central pop was a high sea flare that managed strong coronal movement, and the second was able to produce a major solar tsunami, a canyon of fire where the filament had been, racing away from the blast zone like a shockwave. Let's do the CME analysis. First eruption. I'll admit to some initial incredulity at the breadth of the ejecta here. That's a halo eruption, and it will strike Earth. Second eruption, the plasma filament. This one is even more powerful, and also a halo eruption heading our way. I can confirm nothing big on the far side from stereo, so these are the eruptions we're looking for. Noah's Enlil Spiral has them both on there, and the forecast is about spot on. A tenuous combination of the shockwaves is possible, and I would only tweak that this may hit midday tomorrow rather than at night tomorrow per NOAA's forecast. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we already saw the important solar ejection, so let's come down further to the flaring. We see a continued dominance of the Earth-facing quiet effect over the massive northern sunspots. We had central umbral decay overnight, and it's our only hope that blue intrusion right there he would need to build. Solar wind dropped off just in time to allow Earth's magnetic shield to recover for these incoming bursts set to come tomorrow. Things are calm at Earth right now. Let's also note that there are massive plasma filaments still incoming, one after another, on both the north and the south. It is also important to note that the Quake Watch index has been lower. That's the first coronal hole we've seen in a few days down there. But even without large quakes, we can track the moderate ones to the OLR anomalies. Per last night's Twitter post about them, the anomalies were building at the bend east of Indonesia and north of New Zealand, and also across the Pacific, we noted some anomalies near the Caribbean Oval, even with some partial data missing there at the White Blocks. The largest quake of the last day was right on that bend in the West Pacific, and we are also seeing slight swarming activity in the Caribbean and two on the western lands. Folks, they are learning that they need to learn a lot more. Gamma rays coming from a cosmic jet four light years away from its parent sphere source are defying explanation and what they know about quasars. We also have a fantastic piece about Wolf, 14 light years away, with a potentially habitable planet in great position, right in the middle of the habitable zone. Folks, there is a new Deeper Look episode posted to suspiciousobservers.org if you'd like to check that out requires your humor hat just a bit. And also, folks, observing the frontier, Saturday evening we'll have the social gathering outside the conference center right next to the mobile observatory, just like we did on tour, folks. Come on out, meet us. Details for our conference are at the link below and at suspiciousobservers.org. Well, folks, Sydney got absolutely whacked by the storms that rolled through there. Turns out they and their neighboring areas are sandwiched between two low-pressure cells. More may be coming. We've got the current pressure and radar forecast in our top viewer locations, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.